Welcome back to the channel. Here are the five fatal errors that you need to stop making if you are trying to have a cargo van, a profitable cargo van business. Mistake number one, being too picky when it comes to loads. You know, let's say now, right now you have a cargo van business and you are a rookie owner operator and you're trying to be picky when it comes to loads. Like, you know, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I'm, I'm going to only do this. I'm not, I'm not actually working past eight o'clock. Boss, hey, 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 hey. You really want to be, you want to be flexible. See, when you're new, you want to have a foot in the door. You can't just be too picky because you have no experience yet. Nobody knows your ass. So you really want to be as much as flexible as possible. So when we talk about being picky about loads, when you talk about cargo van business, you have a constellation of loads. For example, you have foods, you have perishables, you have medical products, you have federally sensitive materials, you have hazmat, you have cold products. Now, those products in, in, in uh, I mean, and you have more though. I mean, this is this list is not exhaustive, but what I want to say here is that you have different types of loads and you can say, listen, I, you know, I, I'm doing this, I'm doing foods, I'm doing perishables, I'm not doing medical, I'm not doing federally sensitive materials. The thing here is that there are some loads that are more, they're, they pay a lot more. They are very profitable than others. For example, hazmat always pays good. Federally sensitive materials always pays good. Medical products always pay, pays really good, okay? So the whole thing here is what? You want to make sure that you adapt yourself. You are new in the market. You are new. You're a newbie on the block. You're a new kid on the block. You just want to take everything. I mean, there might be there might be some uh, restrictions depending on the load that you are hauling. But for example, if you are hauling hazmat, you might need some licenses and permits. If you're hauling, uh, let's say, uh, federally sensitive material, you might have some restrictions here. But what I'm trying to say here in general, if there are no restrictions required, you want to take everything that comes your way, boss, because the whole thing is you want to have a foot in the door. Okay. So do not be picky when it comes to loads. Big decision time, boss. Big decision time. Are you a new owner operator? Okay. Are you picky when it comes to loads? Why? Talk to me about that. You should not be picky. You know, I don't care. You know, I don't care about, yeah, you know, I, you know, my cargo van is not suitable for perishables. What you want to do is you want to adapt. You want to adapt because you never know where your profits will come from. You never know what kind of customers you will get. You'll get, uh, let's say, three months from now, or six months from now. So take everything when you start. Take every load. Mistake number two, that all owner operators, the, the, especially the rookies, okay, not communicating promptly with clients. Boss, this is so important. When we are in this business and you are trying to make trying to make money, you are new, or you are new or you are you're an established owner operator, you need to communicate with the clients. Now, when we talk about communication with the clients, what are we talking about? We're speaking about six different things. Unmet expectations, higher, le higher levels of stress, Okay, breakdown of customer relationships. You're not talking to the clients at the right time. Poor customer service, like you actually deliver your load and you're not actually informing the, the clients or you're not following protocol to let the client know, hey, listen, I just deliver your, your load. Everything is fine. You're not doing this. Optic and employee, upset, you know, employee not showing up. What I'm trying to say here is that, you know, the, the client is asking you to uh, be in Philadelphia at 8, at 8 a.m. You agreed to be in Philadelphia at 8 a.m. Last thing you know, you're not in Philly. By 8, you are in Philly by 3 p.m. Okay. And sometimes when we talk about improper communication with the client, if you have, let's say, you have a team. You're not by yourself. You're not a solo owner operator. You have uh, other other drivers and you have a high turnover in your team that's really bad so when we talk about not communicating promptly with clients you can see that i'm speaking about a different uh, i'm speaking about a constellation of things what i want you to do right now if you are a rookie owner operator or you are an, an experienced owner operator i want you to really think about a customer service very very important see you want to have loyal customers and people think about well you know i'm just gonna Haul this load, get paid, and move on to the next load. No, no, boss. Hey, 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 hey. 
I want you to think about quality instead of quantity. It's not about just doing like, let's say, one load a day or two loads a day and just getting my money. No, I'm trying to focus on clients. Think about clients, not loads, because the clients are the one who are bringing the loads to you. So if you are able to cultivate a better relationship with your clients, guess what? You are going to have loads forever for your lifetime, because if the client is happy, if the client is happy, they're going to think of several ways to use you and you will have more business over and over and over. So mistake number two, not communicating promptly with clients. Mistake number one, being, being too picky when it comes to lows. Don't do those. Mistake number three, not pricing your services properly. Boss, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you are just uh, driving here and there and you, you have no idea how to price your services. And the last thing you know, you just sitting there and, sit and, and thinking, how the hell is this happening? I'm just working hard as hell, but I can't really uh, I can't really make a living. You know, that's because you're not really pricing your services properly. You're probably you're probably underpricing yourself, boss. Now, when we talk about pricing your services properly, there are a lot of things you have to do. OK, first of all, I want you to check the competition. Because it's not about just comparing apples to oranges here. No, you want to make sure that you are competitive. Your prices are competitive, boss. So what you want to do is check the competition. Are, are you uh, are you in, in, uh, in Georgia? Are you in L.A.? Are you in Philly? Are you in Chicago? Where where you at? Talk to me about where you at. And that's because when we talk about the competition, we're speaking about the local competition first. And then you move on to you move on to the state level, and then you move on to, to national level. So you want to call all the courier and delivery services near you, or check their websites to get their rates. Very important. It's called intelligence gathering. Intel. You need to gather intel about your rivals. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's legal, by the way. You know, you you really want to check on their asses to know where they're up to. Because listen, you're up against uh, so, some rivals. You need to have some idea about how they operate. Decide how long the job will take. So the first thing, if you want to price your services properly, boss, I want you to check the competition right now. I want you to I want you to think about how long the job will take, how many hours. What is your hourly rate? Boss, talk to me about that. And you know, the, the, the thing is, we tell our clients all the time, when you know your hourly rate, I want you to add 25% on top of that because stuff happens. You need you need to make money. And if you just have a, let's say you have an hour, you have an hourly rate of 20 bucks. Okay. 20 bucks is your hourly rate. I want you to make it 25 bucks. I, I mean, this is just hypothetical here, but 25 bucks, in other words, 25% of a 20, that's a 25. So that's $5 plus 20, that's 25. Okay. Add fees for heavy or bulky packages. Yeah. I mean, those bulky loads, I mean, you know, right now you're 25 or you, you're 30 years old. You're all, you're all vigorous and all. 30 years from now, listen, that hip of yours is going to be problematic. You don't want that. So you need to add fees for heavy or bulky packages you need to charge extra for rush or after hours orders and you need to include a waiting charge very important so let me give you a pro tip you want to you really want to add all those fees in an excel spreadsheet and you want to calculate at the end how much you want to charge per project per load per mile or per hour Mistake number four, not knowing your break-even point. Oh, yeah, this is a big one. You know, the, the funny thing is uh, a lot of owner-operators, especially in the cargo van and the sprinter van businesses, they just want to be on the road. You know, they just want to they just want to haul loads. They just want to go from one point to another, you know, just to go from, from A to B to B to C, all the way to Z, just delivering loads, loads, and loads. But they have no idea what the break-even point is. They have no idea what... What is their profitability threshold? See, what is your break-even point? Let me just break, you know, this is a very complex concept, but I'm going to break it down very easily because we're not here. This is not a financial uh, accounting or financial uh, course here. So I'm just going to use a very simple example. Let's say your break-even point, let's say that you actually, uh, your break-even point is the amount of money that you need to make, the minimum amount of cash you need to make every month just to be able to, uh, not to lose or not to win. Okay, let's say you your expenses, your total expenses, total expenses. I'm talking about fuel, maintenance, you know, the food, whatever you do, 
all those expenses add up to two thousand dollars that's your break-even point so anything you make above two thousand dollars that's profit and you need profit in your business because you, without profit you will not be able to reinvest anything in the business okay you're not in bit this is not a charity hello hello we're not a charity we are here to, to make money and we're here to make lots of money you're working hard you're you deserve to be paid a man deserves to be paid a woman deserves to be paid for her job or his job so what i'm trying to say here is that you always want to add 30 percent to 50 percent or maybe even uh, 20 to 30 percent on your break-even point that's your profit okay so in our example if two grand is your break-even point you need to charge you need to make sure every month you make three thousand if we go with uh three thousand or 2500 or 2800 there has to be something extra so not knowing your break-even point is really quintessential it's a quintessential error you should stop so boss when you get into this business or if you have been in, the, in this business for a while i really want you to really have a clear idea of where you stand financially speaking especially your break-even point okay have that in mind how much should you pull every month talk to me about that how much should you pull minimum 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 for you to and you know it's not about being happy no just to survive just to stay in business let me talk to you about something that's very important here and i want to talk about mistake number five not having sufficient insurance coverage you would not believe you know it's kind of funny you have a lot of players in this industry they don't have the proper cargo van sprinter van insurance you know the funny thing is you might be thinking well that's a waste of money well wait until something happens to you and you have to spend a hundred grand or a quarter of a million to actually indemnify uh, another party then you realize how important it is to have the proper cargo van or sprinter van insurance okay now when we talk about insurance what I want you to do here is to actually contact a broker because the thing here is that if you want to do it by yourself, you might miss an important insurance coverage. So an, an important insurance policy. What you want to do is you want to sit down with the broker and explain your business and based on, on where you at because they have to look at geography. They have, they have to look at the complexity of your business. They have to look at um, uh, the, the requirements of the of the clients and then actually uh, offer you or propose to you at the type of premium, the time of the type of insurance coverage that you need in the first place. OK, when we talk about insurance, there are several types of uh, commercial auto insurance. You have auto liability insurance. So you have uh, so auto liability insurance for cargo vans takes care of a cost when your van causes or contributes to a mishap. So it is mandatory, okay? You need to have this by, it's mandatory by uh, because of the le legislation and the minimum coverage you need to have differs by jurisdiction. So a typical auto liability insurance for van, for cargo van offers bodily injury liability coverage, property damage liability coverage, okay? Very important. You also need to, you need to think about payments for medical services, you need to think about physical damage insurance. Here we're speaking about comprehensive damage protection, collision damage protection, specified peril. Okay, and uh, so and there are other cargo van insurance policies you might need: general liability insurance, commercial property insurance, workers' compensation insurance, employers' liability insurance, employment practices liability insurance, business interruption insurance employee dishonesty insurance what am i what am i trying to say here i'm trying to say that boss this might sound to you like a, a foreign language and it's okay this is why you need a broker you need to sit down with a broker and make sure that you are fully covered do not be stingy here if you are stingy something happened to you god forbid you will lose more than the uh, 300 or 200 dollars that they want you to pay every single month Now, here is a bonus for you. The thing is, when we talk about cargo van business startup mistakes, it, the five that I just mentioned are important, but you need to make sure that you have the right vehicle and that that vehicle is properly maintained. 
Okay, let's quickly go through the when we talk when we speak about cargo van. Let's talk about some of the best cargo vans in the industry right now. So we have when it comes to uh, the best small city cargo vans, we have a uh, based on our research, we have five that are really good. And when you think about cargo van a cargo van business, make sure that you have uh, the right one for your business. Okay, so you have the Ford Transit Connect. So this is actually ideal for let's say. Um, for uh, it's more like a car than a van really okay it can fit in most residential garages even with two wheelbase length options okay this is really good then you have the ram pro master city okay so this vehicle or this van also drives more like a car so this is ram's city version of the pro master this comes with a nine speed automatic tra automatic transmission and best in class cargo capacity then you have the nissan nv200 okay so this is kind of this is kind of cool because it has a low floor a low floor for easy cargo loading and its compact structure makes maneuvering through city streets a breeze now one thing we have seen here is that this is a uh, pretty good depending if you have uh, if you have to do deliveries downtown in a very crowded downtown the nissan nv200 is great and then you have the mercedes-benz mattress okay so this features high cargo capacity in a compact design so the mattress is the, is actually the smaller alternative to the mercedes-benz sprinter so this cargo van was made for urban environments and makes it, it makes it very easy to maneuver through city streets so really good then you have the last one that we have again we are here in the small city in the small cargo van okay the city cargo van category so we have the dodge caravan now as one of the most affordable options in uh, in the list that I just gave you, the Dodge Grand Caravan features a classic design. Okay, it has a six-speed transmission. So if you are looking, let's say, if you are looking for a deal, this minivan model stays poised when navigating city streets and offers plenty of cargo space with all seats folded down. So this is so this is you know if if you are thinking about a city cargo van, make sure that you get the right one, the Ford Transit. The Ram Pro Master City, the Nissan NV200, the Mercedes Benz Metris, or the Dodge Caravan. Let's now talk about the best large cargo vans. Okay, so it's all about having the right cargo van. Okay, and one thing I want to say here is that when we talk about having the large cargo van, it always, you always want to go back to your business model. You want to go back to your geography. You want to go back to the kind of loads you intend to haul. Okay, so in the large cargo van category, we, we have the Ford Transit cargo van. So this is actually one of the best selling vans in America, and it is uh, really great. It is uh, equipped with 10 speed automatic transmission and plenty of room for racks, bins, storage utility, equipment, tools, and uh, anything else you could need. Then you have the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter cargo van, a wonderful van. So if you are looking for a cargo van that can handle heavy-duty work, look no further than the, the, the Sprinter. Okay, And this cargo van is available with standard or high roof option, an option for 4x4, as well as multiple rear step options. Really great. And uh, so what we love with the Sprinter also is that it has an, it has an impressive amount of cargo capacity. Think about that, with 319 cubic feet cubic feet of space available that's just great wonderful then you have this the freightliner sprinter so this is a full-size cargo van with an impressive cargo van capacity okay and uh this is kind of cool and uh, we have the the chevy express cargo van so this is a classic city van but uh, the chevy express has been around for so long that you are likely to have a hard time finding a technician who is not familiar with its mechanics so this is really great then you have the gmc savannah cargo van Okay, now what we love about the Savannah cargo van is that it offers competitive payload and towing capacities with extended wheel bases available. Okay, and you have also uh, you have a large a large cargo capacity here. We're speaking about 239.7 cubic feet, just fantastic. And then you have uh, the Ram Promaster cargo van. So the Ram Promaster actually boasts the lowest load floor height both standard and high roof option and the widest cargo width of any other van in, in its class okay wonderful and then the last one here we have uh, the nissan nv2500 cargo van so this is one of the biggest commercial vans of its kind if you think about it and this model features a ladder tap frame powerful v8 engine seven speed automatic transmission and truck like design for mar for maximum cargo capacity 
So when you are inside the, the roof version, you will, it will even be able to stand up comfortably. This is just fantastic. This is the end of today's conversation. Thank you so much for your attention. So I was quickly talk to you, talking to you about the five mistakes that you need, the fatal mistakes that you need to actually avoid, whether you are a rookie, owner operator, or an experienced one. So number one, being too picky when it comes to loads. Number two, not communicating with promptly with clients. Three, not pricing your services properly. Four, not knowing your break-even points. Five, not having sufficient insurance coverage. And then at the end, make sure you have the right vehicle and that it's properly maintained. Thank you. I'll talk to you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.